The damage is so widespread throughout Kingsville. I met up with the National Weather Service this morning, but before I get into their preliminary results, take a look at this. A man in his early 30s and a woman in her late 20s have been taken into custody by police. So if you're in the area, make sure you pay attention to all the roadblocks by Compton and Waldron. And we're here at the American Bank Center. There is so much space, so much to do, and look how empty the ice is. Everyone is so dedicated to Driscoll Children's Hospital. We are walking in this amazing parade. All right, let's all right, how's everyone doing? Are we good? Are we good? <laughs> Digging out holes, whether it's for a fire pit or maybe a sand castle, but this can actually harm turtles. That among many other reasons that 158 turtles were brought into the ark. Ricardo Ibarra and his family live in the 5900th block of South Oso Parkway. Officials say there were two other men inside of the truck. One of them died at the scene and the other has serious injuries. Due to the seriousness of the allegation, it was very important for them to immediately begin an investigation, as well as reminding students how to use a cell phone responsibly. But the video that the systems captured are only helpful if it's reported to police. Oscar was too old to stay in juvenile detention, so he ended up here at the Nueces County Jail. <laughs> Melissa says what's especially concerning about these loose, vicious dogs is there's a park right next to her house and a recreation center, and just down the way, an elementary school. It's an eerie sound, almost symbolic of life behind bars. Jason Keller calls it the best and worst wake up call he's ever had. It was probably for the better for myself because the road I was traveling down wasn't a good one. Keller is serving time for drug possession charges, but this isn't about his rock bottom. This is how he's digging his way out in the form of education. I want to be a better person for myself, my parents, I have a daughter. We got some good guys that went down the wrong road and we're going to try to help them get back on that path. Sheriff Alden Southmade and his team found a grant funded program through Crossroads, a part of Education Service District 2 in Corpus Christi. They have so many skills, but they don't have that piece of paper to hang on the wall or to show an employer. So we're hoping that this is going to really help with that. Twice a week, they sit in front of a projector screen and a teacher in Alabama leads class. The inmates that want to be better, we're all getting there one step at a time, you know. It's just the progress from starting at rock bottom and moving your way up. For Jason, this is his second chance with people like Sheriff Southmade and Stacy Yanta cheering him on. He's so happy. It's just nice to see them excited about this. Their hope is once the inmates graduate from the program, they'll become worse members of society and the next time they meet is outside of B County Jail. It's the goal to set so we got to take those steps to get there and we're on our way. Madeline Dart. My hope is that it's giving them hope. Three news. Inside one of these homes is a restaurant which looks and sounds just like this. These are just light summer tastes, some berries, some cheese on some olive oil toast. Chef Natalie Trevino is bringing strangers into other people's homes with, yep, you guessed it, food. It's so rewarding. Trevino inventing this pop-up dinner party called the Ruffian. My take on food is always with French techniques, but I'm Natalie, I'm gonna throw stuff, whatever I wanna put in there. So the ruffian just kinda comes in there and roughs stuff up. But the location of this dinner, it's up to a trusting stranger who decides to host it. The location remaining a mystery to everyone who buys a ticket. I'm glad you guys are all here. They're strangers and it's, it's really cool. It's really, really cool. I think it's so fun. It really is building community inside Corpus. Trevino says it's the best way to bring people together while bonding with her family, including her sous chef, AKA mother. You're doing good, uh, eight, nine. It's a lot of fun. As she prepares courses, Natalie says it's a way of honoring her late grandmother. Just wanna call her and tell her, but yes, I think she'd be so happy and say, it's about time. <laughs> I think she would definitely tell me that. During her 11th pop-up dinner, Trevino reflects on starting her own business. We're just here for the ride. It's like when you start running downhill, but then your feet just keep going and you've got some more down. Saying she's excited to do what she loves by feeding people in the coastal bend in hopes of having a lasting effect. And they're trusting me that it tastes good. And so far, everybody's about to hit, so. We're doing something right. Because let's face it, life is too short to eat anything but amazing food. 
Madeline Dart. All right, service please. Three news. 6,935 days. That's how long Christina Torres's family has wondered where could she be? Every year, January the 2nd, you know, I, I put it out there and I hope that people will share it mm -hmm. and that somebody will see it and know something or say something. Cynthia Torres remembers the panic and confusion when Christina didn't pick up her daughter from her dad's house. They filed a missing persons report and one week later, Christina's car was discovered off of I-37 near Mathis. Once they found her car, then I knew something was wrong. I knew something had happened to her. Cynthia says there was a note on her car reading, don't look for me in her handwriting. Then investigators found a note in Christina's work locker. Allegedly, she wrote about starting her life over, but her family didn't buy it. She would not leave her daughter behind. She would have at least told me something like, you know, I'm gonna go out of town. We know that she's, not, she's probably not alive. You know, she's not, I, I, I don't think so. Cynthia says everyone close to her sister was questioned and still no one has been found responsible for her disappearance. 19 years later, they hold on to a glimmer of hope by supporting Christina's daughter. You know, how can you go without your mom? It's hard, she needs her mom. For now, Cynthia remembers the happy memories with her little sister. I hear country music and it reminds me of her, especially Shania Twain. She just loved dancing to, man, I feel like a woman. <laughs> Madeline Dart, 3 News. <laughs> Rancher Harvey Buring calls in his cattle as they take shelter from the sweltering temperatures. Then he gives them feed because his pasture is drying out. This year we are in a deficit of, of uh, rainfall. It caused our pastures to decline much more rapidly than they normally do. Buring is referring to a hot and dry summer. He says ranchers across South Texas are starting to turn to alternative ways to keep their herds alive. Even though grain prices are low, uh, manufactured feed is around $400 a ton and so you have to watch your nickels. Luckily, Buring prepares for dry spells. Jason Ott with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension says it's something every experienced farmer should do. They need to be looking at those critical times when uh, forage production uh, needs to be maximized and, and making some observations as far as rainfall. Whenever we get into to dry periods of time, uh, it is important to adjust your stocking rates. Something that Buring has already done. So far, he's relocated eight of his cows to other ranchers land. Start marketing calves earlier, uh, start culling some of your older animals, taking them out of the production. And if all else fails. Trying to do your best to hold things together if it doesn't rain for another month. What is normal, really? Is it the ability to fit in with the rest without difficulty every day? And if you're not normal, what are you? weird? They're not any different than us and don't look at them because they have this or this. Don't don't look at them as that. Get to know them. Say hi. In a town with barely 2,000 people is a nonprofit shop named Heavenly Angels. You gonna take care of it? Yeah, I'll do that. And it's anything but ordinary. I've never met a more wonderful group of girls to work with. They truly are just the sweetest girls. It's a place where the food is homemade and acceptance is abundant. Thank you. Founded in 2016, Heavenly Angels gives anyone with a disability a place to gain vocational skills, whether it's in the kitchen. That's how I pressed a combo. Crafting or just being around others. When I am to see a um, Rose and Jill. <laughs> Operations manager Danielle Sawyer says each employee, like Sophia Salika, can find their niche. I just like to do them. Maybe the register in the orders. Yes, Sophia, who's on the spectrum, is perfectly capable of taking orders, handling money, and interacting with others. She's so willing to pitch in and just help where needed. She, she has a fuller life. So what is normal? Well, in this safe haven, it's faith, patience, understanding and love. It's the root of this organization, and if we can show anybody that, that would be the one thing I would hope we can show. Everybody wants to feel that they are a part of something and they can contribute. 
And that's, that's what we do here. That's what we do here. Madeline Dart, 3 News.